Our company is called Healthy Cleaner for All, and this data analysis presentation is brought to you by Shravan Sridhar and Aaron Leach. So some background for this research is that in 2023, Canadian wildfires showed that there was a growing urgency of addressing air quality issues, especially in urban areas like New York City. And poor air quality from events like wildfires poses significant health and environmental challenges. Healthy Clean Air for All is committed to using historical data and advanced analysis to identify key trends and factors affecting air quality using data from data.gov. Our mission is to provide actionable, evidence-based recommendations to improve air quality and create a healthier future for all. So taking a look at some general trends, and we'll start off with NO2 and specifically in Queens, highlighting, highlighted here by the graph to the left. Um, you can look at the parts per billion average of NO2 in the past few years, and it's as shown by the line graph, it has gone down tremendously with sharp declines after 2011 and after 2017. And this may be attributed by better management of boilers, as you can see on this next slide. Um, SO2 is a common pollutant from boilers, and um, the fact that there's a decrease from 2013 to 2015 means there's generally been better management of boilers. And since NO2 is also another common pollutant from boilers, um, it is the reason it's gone down is also probably due to better boiler management. So some other causes for better air quality of NO2 uh, may be attributed to transition to renewable energy sources, cleaner vehicle technology, as we see commonly with hybrids and electric vehicles, which don't um, emit any uh, pollutants while driven. And some spikes may, may be attributed to factors such as increase in traffic, manufacturing, construction, and slash or weather. Um, and we can see this uh, occur leading into 2011 and in 2021. And just to show you that this trend is common across all boroughs in New York City, um, we can see through all the other four boroughs that it's the exact same trend with the line graph. So continuing with general trends, we want to look at fine particles. And here we're looking at the borough of Queens. So if we look at the MCG per M3 average of PM2.5 particles in the past few years, it has also gone down tremendously, which is similar which is due to similar factors such as NO2. And this is because of generally an improved emissions control. And so for example, the EPA has placed restrictions on motor vehicles. They have also put placed restrictions on coal and oil plants. And the NYC Law 97 has also reduced pollution from bank buildings, most prominently in the heating systems. And the restrictions on coal and oil plants is, is a general thing, and the EPA is the one that focused on restrictions on motor vehicles. And continuing, going back to Aaron. As you can see, these trends are consistent throughout all the boroughs of New York City. All right, let's look at some health effects, specifically with asthma. So... This bar graph shows the importance of keeping the pollution down in the city to ensure the well-being of the population. As, um, as the WHO identifies asthma as um, a respiratory illness that can be caused by poor air quality. So as you can see from the bar graph, over the years, the city has done a great job of keeping, of, um, of continuing to improve air quality in the city as um, there's been less asthma hospital visits due to PM particles over time, and overall the city should still try to continue to make efforts to lower these numbers. So next we analyze the miles driven annually. And so Southeast Queens is the only area that has shown to have fewer vehicle miles traveled annually. And this may be due to factors such as increased service on bus routes or upgrades to Long Island Railroad service. And it may not be done by Manhattan or at least throughout Manhattan. Also, less vehicle mile miles would reduce overall emissions and would drastically improve air quality. So public transport would aid in this and would be more desirable instead of owning a vehicle in the city. All right, and let's, lastly, let's take a look at the average ozone. So um, according to an Environmental Project Protection Agency, ozone can be really detrimental to health ranging from coughing to even premature death from long-term exposure. And while the city has made good efforts that have resulted in less ozone in some years, as you can see between 2015, 2021, and even you see a dip in or, or at around 2013, it seems to have skyrocketed right back up after 2021. 
Um, but this may be attributed by immediate transportation and production following the COVID-19 pandemic. So for our summary of recommendations, um, we want to first start with adopting advanced air monitoring. So we want so we're deploying real time air quality sensors in high traffic area areas to identify pollution hotspots. Additionally, we want to transition to low NO NOx technology. So we're encouraging inter industries to upgrade to low emission boilers and burners. And last and also we want to implement green roof systems. So we're installing vegetation on rooftops to absorb pollutants and improve urban air quality. And some other ways we could improve would be to electrify fleet operations, and this would involve replacing diesel delivery vehicles with electric or hybrid models. And we could also enhance public transit efficiency by improving bus and subway ventilation systems with HEPA filters, which would um, significantly reduce the poor air quality within the public transportation. And Lastly, we could expand and electrify public transportation um, and by investing in electric buses, trains, and improved transit networks all to reduce vehicle emissions. So, and, and all of this can be um, done overall to improve and as, and New York City's poor air quality even after the 2023 wildfires. And thank you all for your time. This is our work cited.